Hi, my name's Paul Barker. I'm the owner of Cinnamon Square Bakery in Rickmansworth, England. Today, I want to talk to you about my new forthcoming book, which is being published by Quarry Books in October this year. My book is all about fermenting breads using natural methods. So rather than using fresh yeast or dried yeast, we're actually going to ferment fruits, vegetables, plants or flowers in vessels like this and then use the water that's contained in these uh, vessels to ferment our bread. So our recipes would contain flour, salt and water from these fermenting uh, vessels. Also we'll have recipes to make sourdough breads as well uh, and some of those are award-winning breads which we've managed to achieve at Cinnamon Square. So today uh, I want to tell you and show you how to make this, my Church Street sourdough, uh, which in 2017 was voted the UK's best loaf. So to make this, we're going to start off with uh, 387 grams of white bread flour. We've got 49 grams of dark rye flour. We've got 49 grams of wholemeal flour. 10 grams of salt and then we've got our sour culture. Now there's 195 grams of our sour culture uh, in here. Now if you've never made bread using sourdough before this is just a mixture of flour and water which over time uh, becomes acidic and also you'll have wild yeast that uh, sort of land in here and they love this environment and they start to uh, grow and they produce carbon dioxide gas. So by mixing together flour and water every day for about a week to two weeks, what will happen is your mixture will change gradually over that period of time and become very stable uh, and then you'll see after a feeding after a few hours you'll see a lot of fermentation activity going on a lot of bubbles appearing in the sour culture when you uh, when you initially start one off and it gets to this stage you then have a sour culture which you can then use indefinitely so this one I'm using here uh, I started 14 years ago and uh, as long as I feed it regularly uh, and look after it like a pet or a child uh, we have to keep it fed keep it nice and warm uh, it will last indefinitely so uh, we've got that in here my own sour culture and then finally water uh, 300 grams of water and uh, I call it grams not milliliters you must weigh all your ingredients in grams that way you're going to be really precise in your measurements which means it gives you greater consistency in your baking so 300 grams of water into the bowl and then we'll start to combine these together so one hand in the bowl keep the other hand spare just in case uh, you need to pick up any utensils etc and then just bring those ingredients together into the bowl until it starts to form uh, a lump and this is kind of called the flop stage uh, as it's kind of coming together once it's more together we're then going to do the rest of the work on the table okay now what you need to do with the last bits you'll find you'll have a sticky dough here and then dry bits at the bottom you need to squeeze your hand through the sticky dough and that will absorb those last pieces of flour down the bottom okay tip out the remainder now you see there's a few little remaining bits around the side of the bowl always scrape those bits out with one of these scrapers uh, because whatever you leave behind there is obviously part of your bread so we don't want to leave anything in the bowl okay now mop up those last bits on the table and then we're ready to start kneading our dough now there's various ways you can knead dough uh, and uh, the more water that you uh, put into a dough, uh, the more open and the chewier the crumb will be, but the more difficult it is to start to knead the dough the more traditional way, which is generally where people stretch the dough, fold it, turn it, stretch it, fold it. It's a bit more difficult when you've got a wet dough. So this kind of, this dough isn't as wet as they can be, uh, but uh, I'll show you the other method which can be used is where you can sort of slap and fold the method uh, is where you pick up your dough hit it to the table fold it over grab a new piece fold it over take it from the side and fold it over now at the moment 
it's all rough and ragged and just falling apart. So that yeast is going to be enjoying this environment, making lots of gas, but there's no structure to hold on to that gas. So what we need to do is we need to develop that dough by working it on the table. And what will happen is it will start to form gluten. So the protein in the flour absorbs the water and starts to form. If you can imagine either millions of elastic bands in your dough or millions of balloons in your dough. And uh, if you can imagine a balloon, uh, when you blow it up, it goes really, really strong and tough. And if you can imagine millions of those in your bread dough, filling up with the gas that the yeast makes, and they're really, really strong balloons, that means your dough is gonna be really tolerant for the rest of the process. And when it goes in the oven, it's gonna form and it's gonna expand lovely, with no collapsing back, okay? And you can only do that by working the dough and generating that uh, nice, smooth, elastic structure, okay? So when they say kneading dough is therapeutic, it's more energetic than therapeutic. If it's therapeutic, you're not working hard enough, okay? So we need to keep going. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna keep working away, and maybe speed up the video, and then we'll come back when the dough is much more formed. Okay, so, ah, I'm tired already. If we have a look at the dough now, after that work, it was just not forming anything. Now, when I stretch the dough, you can see now it's still tearing, but it's uh, stretching. And you imagine blowing up a balloon to the maximum, you can start to see through it. And when you can see through it, and you can see your fingers without it tearing, you know your dough has got sufficient gluten for the rest of the process. So, here we go again. Okay, <sighs> trying to get my breath back. So, if we now take a look at the dough, you can see how much smoother it's become. It's not rough and ragged how it first started. And now let's see if I stretch the dough. Yeah, if you can see that now, I'm stretching the dough so fine, you can now see my fingers through it. That means that we've developed a decent amount of gluten, which will help contain the yeast and make the dough more tolerant for the rest of the process. Because the last thing we want to do is to spend hours letting this dough prove into the oven and it's very weak and it has no strength to rise and it collapses back. So, we've got there. We've got a dough. Now, to make our Church Street sour, I have enough uh, dough here to make two of them. So, what I need to do is normally, this is uh, a small loaf of bread and uh, small loaves, the old fashioned one pound loaf of bread, well, we weigh them at 4.75. So to make this, basically we have an inner dough, which is into a ball, and then we have this outer casing, which allows for this wonderful sort of floral shape to it once it's been cut and baked. So to do that, I need to weigh the middle bulk part of the dough. I'm gonna weigh that at um, 350 grams, and then the outer part of the dough is going to be uh, 125 grams. So. Three fifty. Three fifty. One two five. One two five. Teeny bit left over, and I'll just put that in between the two bulk ones. Now. Forget about using a damp tea towel uh, to uh, leave your bread to uh, expand uh, and prove. Basically, your best bet nowadays is to get yourself some of these plastic tubs and they work wonderfully for proving dough. Okay? The beauty is it creates some, uh, a sort of a, a, a moisture 
uh, environment where it can uh, sort of get all nice and humid inside and it keeps itself warm and snug because it will generate some heat whilst in there. It keeps all the drafts away from it so it won't form any skin. So it's a wonderful thing to use for proving dough. And if it was a bit cold, just uh, boil the kettle, put some uh, water in a cup, put the cup in here as well, and that will create some heat and some humidity. So to round these up, what we need to do is, if you can imagine going back to how we were originally uh, kneading it, slap it, fold it over, slap it, fold it over, and try and keep the top surface smooth, by tucking it underneath here and pushing it up against the table, I can make it into a ball. Okay. There are different ways to round up dough. Uh, another way is to stretch it, fold it, so stretch it, fold it, and it's all collecting in one position underneath, like so. It's all the way round, and then underneath again, and so you have a nice smooth surface, and then tuck. So I'm pushing up against the table to try and make it taut and it's all collecting at the bottom. Like so, and then the balls, normally when you're rolling up uh, small round pieces of dough, if you cup your hands and oscillate around like this, keeping that dough moving but only uh, stuck to the bottom so it's not actually rolling over, your hands nice and tight around the pieces of dough, you end up with two small balls like so. Now, these are gonna go with the lid on into our little proofing cabinet, okay? And then after 30 minutes, set a timer. Uh, after 30 minutes, we're gonna re-round them. Uh, and then after another 30 minutes, we'll re-round them again. Another 30 minutes, re-round them again. Every time you kind of re-round them, you're working the dough, you're co coalescing any large and random sized bubbles down. You're also imparting strength to the dough. So what you'll find is, especially when the doughs are really soft, Every time you re-round them, you'll find that the dough gets stronger and stronger because you actually impart more and more strength to the dough by doing this method. So generally, uh, when you've uh, made a, a dough, a long fermented dough, you'll normally be giving it two, three, four uh, re-rounds, knock back, stretch and fold. So you have different terminology, but all they're doing is adding strength back to that dough. So after you've done each one, you'll find that the dough feels stronger and it doesn't flow so much between each addition after you've let, allowed them to relax. Okay, so when this has had its uh, re-rounds uh, and about two hours later, I will then be showing you how to transform the two pieces of dough into this kind of shape. Okay, so now we're ready to shape our Church Street sourdough. So it's had uh, two hours uh, of proving in the uh, boxes and I've re-rounded it three times and now it's had another 30 minutes instead of re-rounding it I'm now going to shape it. So there's a couple of things we need to do is firstly we start off with the smaller pieces of dough I'm going to just cover them in top and bottom in flour okay and then these I'm going to roll out into a disc like so make sure it's not stuck to the table so I need flour but I don't want to have too much flour either uh, because we want our dough we want our dough to be able to um, I can say stick to this um, but not too dough, uh, not too floury so uh, then it will uh, have a big air bubble in there as well okay so these a nice splash of olive oil okay a very generous amount and this is going to help when this goes in the oven to expand this is going to help form these uh, petals which are going to lift away from the actual dough inside okay now we're ready for our rounds these are the bigger pieces. Always make sure the nice smooth surface is face downwards and then you can see how sticky it is. I'm going to stretch it, fold, turn, stretch, fold, all the way around in a circle, like so. Cup it round into a ball and then dip it in. We've got like a 5C blend. Uh, we've got sun, no pumpkin, we've got linseed, millet seeds, Cover it 
in the seeds and then place it upside down so the rough side is facing up onto the oil. Okay, and I'll do the same with this one. Stretch, fold all the way round, and that'll just make the dough nice and tight. Never use any flour when you do this bit, otherwise, the seeds won't actually stick to the dough. Okay. And then onto there. And then what we need to do now is encase the uh, seeded uh, inner of the dough and do that by taking the opposites of the uh, smaller disc, fold it over like that. So we're kind of wrapping it over like so. And then the other end as well. So it's totally encased. Pinch it just to make sure it's sealed. Turn it over, cup it round just to make sure it's nice and tight into a ball. And I'll do the same again with this one. Over like so. Over, over, over. Turn it round. Over, over, over. Pinch it so it's tight. And then cup it round like so. Now, because these are a soft dough and they're going to take a while to prove, uh, if we just left them on a tray, they would flow too much. So what we do is we use these proving baskets, proving banatons, uh, and inside I'm gonna generously spread uh, a mixture of uh, ground rice and rye flour. Okay. Just a 50-50 mix, rough mix, nice generous amount. Turn over the piece of dough so the rough end is facing upwards and then sprinkle some more of the uh, mixture on the top, back into there, and I'll do the same again nice sprinkle in here you want to make sure you put uh, enough in because the last thing you want is when you turn out that dough that's nicely proved it's stuck in there and trying to get it back out you might start to damage it and deflate the dough so always turn it over the nice side is always facing down into the banneton nice amount of uh, dusting on the top into the proving box lid on and then we're ready to leave this uh, until it's big enough uh, to be proved. Now, uh, it may take two, three, four hours. It depends on how active that sour culture is. Uh, and But generally, it should come to about uh, nearly up to the top of the banneton. So it's going to grow quite nicely. Now, because it's quite a soft dough and we need to be cutting it quite intricately, uh, if we cut it straight when it's proved, turn it over and cut it, it's fine. But because it's at room temperature, it's more difficult to cut. So what's a good idea is to actually put these, once they're proved, into the fridge to get them chilled down. Now you could leave it in the fridge overnight because that actually helps to uh, accentuate the nice crust, uh, better color, nicer flavor from being retarded overnight in a refrigerator. Or just chill it down in the fridge so it's nice and cold. And then when you turn it out, it'll have a lovely surface for you to cut really delicately uh, and so it will then expand in the oven. So you actually put it in the oven straight from the fridge once you've cut it, okay? So I'm gonna leave this. When it's big enough to go in the oven, I'll be back. So our dough took about four hours uh, to get to a, a really good height. As you can see, it's um, proved up right and nicely into the bowl. Uh, I've, been, I've placed it in the fridge for a few hours, so it's nice and cold, and it's got a better surface now for us to cut. So before I cut it, first thing I'm going to do is just put some ground rice over the, the top of the dough, which is actually the bottom of the dough, uh, just to take away the stickiness, and then throw some of the ground rice onto my peel. So this is my pizza peel. Turn it out onto the peel, and then I'm going to cover the top in a nice layer of uh, sift ground rice. And now we're going to cut through the top surface. So just the outer skin, I need to cut that into eight portions. And what I'm going to use is just one of these uh, decorative knives. You can use a, a flat razor blade or you can buy these already prepared. Um, or you can, like I say, you can use a, a flat razor blade, but just use it very, very, very gently. Now, all I want to do is just cut through the outer surface, but not through the middle section of the dough. And what we'll see is that the dough will just apart as you cut through it so into quarters and then cut again into eighths like so finally okay 
so as you can see we've got eight cuts and uh, this surface nail can come away from the uh, inside so with well, this is now going to go into my oven uh, and um, this oven has uh, a baking stone at the bottom it's set at 230 degrees slide it into the oven and then I'm going to add uh, some water to it and that's going to create some steam now uh, you can do this on your oven at home uh, you may not want to just throw it in like I did uh, if you have a nice roasting tray at the bottom of the oven really hot and then pour just a little bit only a smidgen of water into the bottom of the pan it will then create a lovely burst of steam now what's the benefit of using this steam well as the uh, dough first enters the oven it starts to get warm it starts to grow uh, as it starts to expand because of the yeast producing more and more gas uh, as put up it goes but also it's now going to start to form a skin and the drier the oven the quicker the skin forms basically when the skin starts to form it restricts any more growth so by steaming the oven we allow the dough to expand just that bit more which helps to create a more bigger voluminous loaf of bread also uh, it helps to generate a nice shine to bread but because we've dusted ours with flowers we won't see the benefit uh, of something like that so that will take about 30 minutes or so to bake uh, I generally check it at about 15 minutes 20 minutes just to make sure everything's okay I can adjust the oven if it needs adjusting uh, so we'll leave it in the oven and then we'll come back in about 30 minutes or so to see what it looks like coming out the oven so here we are at the final leg of our Church Street sourdough journey uh, the bread's been in the oven for 30 minutes I'm now going to take it out and then we can have a look uh, and evaluate the bread Okay, so here as we can see uh, we've got the lovely petals real crispiness to it because it's been in the oven baked on a stone for such a long time uh, and uh, actually one way some people actually eat this bread is they break off the petals uh, and use them in a dip so it's quite a multi-purpose uh, loaf if you try and make this one yourself at home now so uh, I hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, watching my little video on how to make the church street sour uh, the book uh, naturally fermented bread uh, will be launched by Quarry Books hopefully uh, in October uh, and uh, fingers crossed uh, if we can get the pandemic out of the way everybody stays safe uh, we should see it then so if you want to know more about uh, our breads and especially uh, the botanical breads which will be in the book uh, so many of the recipes will be based on using uh, fruits vegetables plants and flowers to actually uh, ferment away and use the water from that together with salt and flour to make the most wonderful simplistic breads uh, you can even grow your own products to actually ferment to make the breads from yourself uh, also there'll be buns as well so sweet fermented goods like cinnamon buns belgian buns finger buns all those types of products uh, will be in the book for you uh, as well so uh, thank you for your time for watching uh, if you need to know any more um, have a look at quarry books uh, have a look at cinnamonsquare.com uh, and uh, send us an email if you need any more uh, information so best wishes everyone stay safe and uh, hopefully see you later on this year